Hey everybody, Dr. Alien 201, Dave here. How are you all doing tonight? Tomorrow, the last Tuesday of last week, whenever you're listening to this. It is Syndicated Pipe Club time once again, and as always, I have my partner, Greg the Badger Piper with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh, you know, I'm just uh, uh, recovering from running around a bit earlier today. Went to uh, the farmer's market for some stuff, and uh, that kind of put me a little bit behind, but uh, I'm here and ready to start recording. Glad to see you. I'm glad you're ready to start recording, because we are recording. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Although without music, because I don't have any place for uh, for the music this this week, it's been hectic. I'll have to add it in post. Yeah. Thank goodness for post. Yeah. So as everyone may or may not be aware, depending on where you get your syndicated pipe club, I have had a heck of a week been dealing with accidents and insurance adjusters and learning about leases that you know you never should have been things like that it's just car wreck is not something i i uh not something i recommend for fun don't do it yeah the i had that happen to me in uh 2018 and uh that was not fun not fun at all oh yeah but the moral of the story here, everybody was okay. Everybody walked away, both sets of uh, sets of drivers, my wife and my entire family, and uh, the people that ran into her. Unfortunately, though, she was leaving our driveway, so it was technically, by law, her fault. Ah, uh, nuts. I don't know if that's the same law over there in the U.S., but um, I'd be surprised if it isn't. Yeah. I'm not, I, I, I imagine it would probably end up being like that, or similar, anyway. Yeah. Like, a lot of the basic stuff is the same no matter what country you're in. It just depends on if you know how to read the speed limit or not. Right, right. So I know. There are, there are a bunch of Americans that have come over here to Canada before and gotten speeding tickets because they were reading the signs in miles an hour, not kilometers an hour. Well, um, when we were up, when we went to Canada... Uh, my wife and I took uh, our Prius that we had, uh, and the nice thing about the Prius is that uh, oh, there's just a little button that you can press, and it'll automatically switch between miles and uh, kilometers. And so, like, nice. Yeah, as soon as we went over, because uh, yeah, so. Um, And that button, they actually use that to, uh, it's one of the buttons you hit to reset, like when you have to go get uh, services done. Because I've gone to get, uh, before we went on the Canada trip, um, I would get the car worked on and then I would leave the the auto place. And uh, I'd be like, whoa, why is it saying that like I'm driving super fast, but uh, I feel like, you know, I'm not driving as fast as it's saying. And then I look and realize it's in kilometers. Oh, that's why. <laughs> yes, because uh, you guys are the only cr- country that still uses miles. Yes, because we're special. Uh, so, uh, yeah, all, all we had to do was just press a button, and uh, we were set for, like, that whole trip. And then uh, that made it super easy. Yeah, so it was super easy, barely an inconvenience, unlike yeah, an, uh, unlike a car accident. Right, which is never convenient. Unless you're looking to get rid of your car. No, we were not. We were looking to keep that car for a while. Yeah, no, that, that's what I was uh, worried about when you mentioned that. I was like, man, like that's not a... That really sucks. It does, because as of... Let's see, this is Wednesday. As of Friday recording time of course which was last week for everybody else so by this time when you guys are all hearing and seeing this we will have been without a vehicle for five days was the car uh, totaled no it wasn't totaled but the uh, the write-off value was less than the uh, 
repair value. Gotcha. So, of course, the adjuster wrote it off, which is, of course, you, you know, understandable. The insurance company's got to make their money, too. Mm-hmm. Even though they already make their money by charging me money. Right. And you money and everybody money. But yes. this is why you pay insurance, because honestly, the the headache that I have now would be so many so many times greater if I didn't have the insurance because, you know, that would all be stuff that I have to run down. That's why we have the adjuster. Right. So for all you people out there who think car insurance and auto insurance and all that stuff is a bad thing, you are nuts. You're If you're in an accident, your life would be so much harder if you didn't have it. Yeah. Especially well, when you... I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's annoying, but... Uh, in the end you know and, and there's definitely times where you feel like they're uh, they're not really there to help you as much as they are to just get money but uh, you know in the end it's better to have it than not to oh yeah yeah but in, in this case it's, the joke's on them because uh, the way things work out because uh, the car wasn't paid off yet and uh, the amount of money we will end up with will not replace the vehicle we are going to be carless. At least we live in a city. Yes. It's yeah. still not an ideal situation by any stretch of the word. No. Not ideal at all. Ideal would be, hey, look, it's, it's not your fault. We, we'll just give you another car. Or even ideal would have actually just been, we, we're going to re- be able to repair this. So, there you go. You're all repaired. Ha, have a nice, nice day. But, you yeah, know what? That's not how it's gonna work out, and you know, give us it'll give us some time. You know, we're, we're gonna get a, even though we still owe some on the car, we're gonna get a decent chunk back, like almost three grand, and that's a good start. It ain't a vehicle yet, but it is a good start. Right. And with, without having the vehicle, we've just our monthly bills will go down by five hundred and fifty dollars a month. So it won't take it won't take long to get up enough money to have a vehicle owned outright again. Yeah. Wow. I, I, now, now I see. Now I see what the music is really for. There's like a big gap here. Oh no! I um, I would have said <laughs> something, but uh, the clamp that's holding my microphone up was uh, tilting over. Yeah, I, I noticed you playing there. I went, okay, we got a big swatch of dead air, but. The brilliance to the way we're doing the podcast video right now with the Minecraft background and whatnot is if the gap is too big, I can cut it out. Excellent. So yeah, like if it's going on for just like two or three or four seconds, I'm not going to worry about it too much because the music will cover that. We're, we're smoking, we're doing other things. You know, people kind of expect, if you're listening to a podcast that involves any kind of pipe smoker, you, you got to expect a longer gap, because we're doing stuff like this, which you can't see. Right. Taking drags, relighting the, relighting the, relighting the, the pipe. Every time you hear this sound, that's just me relighting the pipe, because it went out. And, you know. We're setting something on fire. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're lighting dead plants on fire and it's stuffed into a, you know, an, old, an aged piece of wood and, and sucking it through a, a straw-like acrylic, mostly, thing. Sometimes other things. It's really interesting. Yes. If somebody explains it to you properly. And if you want that, go to Country Squire Radio. That uh, clamp must be which... <laughs> that, that clamp must really be giving you trouble. Like you guys can't see it, but Greg's adjusting his mic again. Yes. Yeah, it's super special and awesome. Yeah, folks, I got a okay. lot of extra editing to do this time. Normally it's just My bad. it normally it's just pull it, plop it, done. I love it. But uh yeah, the gaps are just too big and without music there it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna go well, so it'll just be right. I'll cut it down a little bit. Yeah. So, don't worry, folks. You get to hear about all all my woes of, of editing, but you don't have to see them. 
<laughs> so anyway, what are you uh, smoking tonight? I am smoking something called Double Down. It's uh, a bulk blend from... Uh, I can't pronounce it. Grand Coupier, I guess, is how it's called. I think it's a... I think it's a smoking pipe subsidiary, maybe a La, like a Ladisi, because I think that's who owns smoking pipes. I'm not sure if it's one of their blenders or a combination of their blenders or whatever, but it's a it's a burly blend, and it uh, is just uh, you know the the whatever the leftovers from uh, various burly blends and whatnot. And I just noticed what pipe you're smoking. Yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and what, uh, but before we get into that, what pipe are you smoking tonight? This is just my little uh, Capri. And by Capri, I mean that's what's stamped on the side. We're not talking a Savinelli Capri here. We're talking a basket pipe with the name Capri stamp, stamped in it. It's just, just a simple acrylic stand. It's a stem. It's a, it's a nice little, uh, it's got a nice little blast to it. You know, something I picked up at the local shop for like 50 bucks. Nice. Now, I know where that pipe that you're smoking came from. Yes, you do. It came from Canada. It is the Brigham pipe that you traded me. Yes, yes, it is. That's why I recognized I didn't recognize it right away. And then I saw the three dot and I'm going, oh, he's got the pipe going. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have uh, this Brigham. Uh, it's a Brigham Sports. Much. It's a Brigham Sportsman. It's a Brigham Sportsman, yes. Uh, as you can see, I'm an expert on Brigham pipes. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's a pipe that I traded for with uh, with Dave. This used to belong to him. And uh, you now he has uh, two of mine, and uh, I have uh, one of his here. <laughs> uh, I just realized something. Technically, you actually do have two of mine because you have that Umpal uh, too from, yeah, the, the Umpal. Yeah. from years ago. <laughs> right. Well, and then you have that. Uh, Cobb as well from me from uh, the Chicago show. Oh yeah, so I got three from you. I'm behind a little bit. But anyway, yeah, but no, got... but that's all good. And who and who's counting? Anyway? I am. Uh, <laughs> but I do have your. I, look, found. The, see, I found it. Yeah, found this down. I sent you a picture, <laughs> but what you guys may or may not be aware of is uh, when 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 the box like my box with the with the with the pipe Greg has got to him first. His took a little bit longer, but for some reason, instead of sending it through the way I, I typically get packages from the U.S., they sent it to British Columbia first, which is, like, the wrong way. It's, like, not even the close coast. It's the farther one from me. And it'd be like if they sent it to, if you shipped your package and they first sent it to California for me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Anyway, when I got got the package, I, there was that in it. Uh, I don't have the I don't have the other pipe here in, in my office. It's a, it's on the table, getting ready to. When I actually have a moment where I'm not focused on other things, but just to start on it. Between that and I've got a book here, which I'm flashing for the camera, which it doesn't freaking matter because you guys are looking at Minecraft characters. I'll put a picture of it in the video so you can see the book, the pipe book, the ultimate pipe book, which is cool. I haven't read it yet, but it's on the list. Uh, that came... Yes. Anyway, the stem yeah. fell out of the box. I didn't notice. My wife found it, like, a day later underneath some papers on the table. And I said, where did you get this? It's always on the table. And, well, hell... It is the right one. <laughs> yeah, it's not the greatest stem. Actually, that's probably the biggest problem. I had. Uh, the, the one problem that I had with that pipe is it felt a little almost like rubbery. But then again, it might just because it, it's a big pipe and a heavy one, so uh, uh, which is a, a bit tough on a, a lumber bit. But uh, you know, I, I still think it's uh, you know workable. Yeah, it just needs a good cleaning. Yeah. This silver band, though, that's there because there's a crack in this pipe. Uh, 
not surprised. It's been repaired. Like, I can see the repair work. I don't know if you noticed it or not. But it... I'm trying to hold it up to the camera, but... Yeah, the camera's not doing too yeah. well tonight. But it's right about here. It's just a little thing. It's been repaired, and it seems to be holding up well. I'm not worried about it at all. At all. Yeah. But yeah, I gotta get that. I gotta get that thing cleaned up, and uh, we gotta get that uh, get that going so I can smoke it. It's the closest thing I've got to a Canadian right now. Yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, and, uh, with this, uh, I'm smoking uh, some CND's uh, poplar camp. But uh, yeah, the I've had like three pipes that I've been meaning to. I've either picked up from eBay. or state uh, uh, antique stores and, and then the one that uh, I got from you and they've been just sitting around and this week I was, and I was like you know I really want to make the next podcast with uh, you know with the pipe you gave me and uh, so uh, two of the three have been fixed up so far although I think I kind of want to uh, I picked up this uh, straight apple uh, butts choking pipe uh, so I'd never had that one and it came in the mail, and uh, man, like, uh, it was just uh, beaten up, like, really bad, and, uh, which I missed in the pictures. But, you know, I, I paid, 20, like, 20 bucks for it. Can't really complain too much. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to have a couple of pipes that are, you know, you have around for, like, uh, knock-around stuff. Um, so I, I just need to kind of... Uh, I'm not happy with the bowl at the moment, how, how clean it is, so I'm going to try to see if I can uh, get some more out of there. This was pretty, This one was really the easiest one to do. Yeah, I, I'm surprised uh, that you uh, didn't clean the stem up more. I, I can still see some oxidation on that, but it, it kind of oh, looks... Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I gave it a, a polish. Uh, I might do another coat or whatever because um, like I, I put it in the oxy clean kind of thing and, and man that made it white yeah, yeah. and I was yeah yeah it was it, of all the ones it, it was the one that was like it turned completely white and I was just like oh my goodness like oh yeah my work cut out uh, yeah so it, to, it, it looks neat it gives it an, it gives it like the, they're supposed to be black but it, it gives it a neat olive like kind of look to me through the camera so mm -hmm. it, it's kind of neat yeah, I like it. it it's a, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with it as it is. Yeah, th there's nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong with leaving uh, some patina on, on your restores, it's just to show their age a little bit, and and give them some character. And you know, leave the history of the pipe there a little bit. Like almost every stem that I've restored has some form of the the oxid oxidation underneath the polish. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's like, uh, you know, I, I leave my gray and my beard by uh, hair rather than coloring it. Which, uh, by the way, I was like, uh, well, uh, to go along with it, I was driving somewhere yesterday and I glanced over at my arm and I saw that two of my arm hairs had turned gray, which I hadn't realized before and just kind of had to, had to keep myself from like getting into an accident because it's just like wait what no oh my gosh i'm really getting old now yeah i've had that experience not fun finding out your arm hairs are starting to turn gray no not at all but i guess that's just the way of things like it's not just the hair on your head that turns it's all of it right Hair turns and then uh, hair starts popping up in places you weren't expecting it to. Yes, indeed. And if you got any Scottish heritage, your eyebrows go wild. Nice. Hoping that happens. <laughs> I don't know if I have enough. Uh, I don't know if I have enough Scottish uh, Scottish in me for that to happen. Oh, I do. You can't tell on the camera, but I do. <laughs> I get to a point where I, where and when I when I every two weeks I go to trim and do a trim on the beard. I'm also brushing my eyebrows up and snipping off the wild parts. 
good. Well, I do. I do have some carrots that uh, kind of like grow extra long. So uh, this is a really interesting episode. Car accidents, <laughs> body hair. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the title of the episode. You say that, and I will probably do it. Car accidents and body hair, and then people will be going, "Wait, what?" <laughs> people will click on it and download it just because they'll want to know what the heck that's all about. Right. Uh, I have one more pipe to clean up. Uh, and it's a really bizarre, too. I, I've never seen a stem like this before. It's a, a Danish pipe. Uh, and it's kind of freehandish, but the, on the stem, instead of the being just this like open slot slit at mm-hmm. the tip of the um, stem, it's uh, two dots instead. I've had one of those before. I didn't like the way that one smoked when I had one like that. I gave it away or sold it. I mean, there was nothing wrong. Have... There was nothing wrong with the draw or anything like that. I just didn't like it. Right. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, I'll be interested uh, to try it. I mean, it's a cool looking pipe, but uh, I, I definitely wasn't expecting the two uh, two dots. No, nobody does. Nobody does. <clears throat> <laughs> Peter Peterson's should come up with a. Uh, um, like a Peterson's pipe, but for like a, for the truly expert pipe smoker, where it's a pila, and it's the two dots on it, or or do some sort of like really bizarre kind of uh, pila. Oh, this is even better. Peterson and EA Carey get together and they do a collab, and then you got the magic inch and the pila, the traditional pila with one dot. There you go. That'll be an interesting pipe to smoke. Throw a stinger on there, too. Mm, I don't think that will work with a Mia Carey. Mm. Just because of the way they're built. Oh, right, right. And if Gordy's listening to this, he's probably shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? looking forward to the meeting where he brings this one up. (laughs) Those are are definitely his favorite pipes. Yes, he's he's said just last week he's got 14 pipes, I think, and only one of them's not a carry. Isn't it a cob? I can't remember. I don't know if it's Cobb or if it's just a, an, just a, just a regular briar, but yeah. Need to hop on uh, this pipe life uh, for it to just uh, do a couple of notes. I, I feel bad. I've really been neglecting it the past couple of months. Just been uh, really trying to hit hard with uh, some some projects and playing the pipes and stuff. So I haven't had as much time to be on the forum as I'd like. Yeah, I go on every once in a while just to read things. Like, to be honest, it's nice to be there so I can read the articles that and things other people post. But I've never been good at forums. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't do well at at typing things out and whatnot. Like, for example, I was on. Uh, doing some things on uh, on Minecraft today, on the Flashcraft server, and uh, one of the other guys was on, and asked me what I was building. I gave him a two-word answer. <laughs> because that's all I could get out in a reasonable amount of time. Right. Just a horrible typer. Coming from the guy who was an employee in a call center for ten years. Here's my tip for all you call center workers if you are new to the job and your company allows it 
notepad on your computer and pre-type all your responses. After about six months, you know what you're going to put in. Doesn't always work because there's always those situations where you have to sit there and you, you got you got oddballs that you really actually have to leave some details for, but for your general stuff, cut and paste, that's the way to go. Yeah, I remember doing kind of uh, stuff like that for my uh, various data entry jobs, just kind of uh, having like Word documents of uh, stuff. I, I think I would definitely adapt to that uh, once I realized that. I had an advantage. My sister worked at the company before I did, so you know she was getting, she gave me tips before I even got out of training. Nice. At least uh, you're, you're able to type with a keyboard. Uh, I have uh, now. Granted, it's just a, a single solitary game, but uh, I remember I, I would hate typing stuff out in uh, the game Animal Crossing because you would uh, and you would have a digital keyboard and you'd have to use like the the stick to move it, you know, the cursor around and uh, put in, like, uh, and, and trying to write a letter that way to your various villager animal friends. Eventually, I just got to the point where I would just do single sentences of just like, I hate you, please move out of this town. <laughs> <laughs> Some, or something like that, just so that I could get the, uh, but you need to do it just to get, like, gifts from them. Right, right. Never played the game, but I am familiar with the mechanics a little bit. Like on YouTube, I'll watch uh, the game theorists whether I play the game or not, because I just I enjoy the video production and mm -hmm. sometimes the the deep lore stuff, depending on the game, is interesting whether you play the game or not. So I know of Animal Crossing. I know of some of the lore to it. It's interesting, but not something I'd play. Yeah, you know. I'm not sure if I'll... Uh, what am I saying? Of course I'll get the next one whenever it comes out, just because uh, it's... Uh, I mean, I've purchased all of them for the most part, except for, like, uh, two spin-off games uh, that came out on the Wii U and the 3DS, but uh, for all the normal entries, I've picked them up. And, uh, you know, they're, they're fun. Like, they're... You know... I'm sure maybe, like when I get to the end of my life, I'll, I might think like, oh, why did I ever play Animal Crossing? Because it's essentially just playing a, a life, uh, somebody else's life rather than like living your own or something. But uh, I don't know. It, it's a fun little kind of a uh, thing that, uh, especially last year when I was kind of uh, depressed about stuff, like it was nice to kind of hop in there and uh, escape from you know, having a job that I hated and uh, uh, other things. So I guess next week we should really get back to Avatar. It's been a while. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. Uh, we can, uh, can do that. Um, oh, I learned that... Um, so there's a new He-Man series that's out on Netflix right now. And, uh, oh right, that's the one that's supposed to be a continuation of the the, the the one that was on like in the early '80s when I was a kid. Right. Uh, well, spiritual continuation. Um. Yeah, it's well. I mean, I won't I won't go into it or anything, but uh, uh, one of the main characters, uh, Tila, her outfits and uh and everything uh, apparently they uh people behind the show were really inspired by uh cora legend of cora and based her off of that which i actually found out uh, the creators of uh, the legend of cora based her and her build and everything off of uh gina carano uh, from when she was uh, an mma fighter that would fit. Yes. Giving what the, what the avatars are supposed to do, that would fit. Yeah. Yeah. Pre Mandalorian, of course. Oh, of course. Like, I mean, she would have been in much better. She was in much better shape as a as a MMA fighter. I remember seeing her fight a right. few times on <laughs> on the pay per views. Yeah. 
but uh, that is no slight against how she looks now. She looks fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she looks great. Uh, just It's, no, just, it's I, just true. Anybody who is doing MMA is in better shape when they're doing MMA than they are just walking around. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, uh, no I, I don't. I, I totally get what you mean, you know. Um, but yeah, no, I just thought it was funny because all that kind of connects together. With, yeah, it uh, does. All kinds of stuff we're watching, with stuff we watched or are watching right now. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm going to say this, and and you and everybody else can do with do with it what you will. Depend if things had turned out slightly differently, just timing wise, that would have been a perfect segue into something I may announce later on. Nice. I'll tell you about it off air. Oh sure, sure, <laughs> yeah. Because don't worry, um, it, it's not affecting this at all. By the way, um, uh, you have Amazon Prime, right? Yes, I do. Did I, t- did I tell you about uh, the Shout uh, Factory TV app? The what? The Shout Factory TV app? No. Okay. Well, if you have like a fire stick or some sort of thing to be able to like kind of download channels to like stream stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it may be different in Canada. I'm not sure. But in the U.S., if you have Amazon Prime, you can download um, the Shout Factory, which uh, they're a company that uh, they're mostly known for. Like uh, they're the ones that put the DVDs out for like Mystery Science Theater. OK. And, uh, some other stuff. But um, they have. Uh, so on their uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can download their app and I believe watch for free. Uh, but uh, on their uh, app, you can watch uh, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, this, uh, they have Mystery Science Theater on there, but they also have uh, a lot of Japanese superhero shows like Ultraman, like a lot of the old Ultraman uh-huh. uh, shows, Common Writer, and uh, Super Sentai. And uh, like hours out, like hours of content. Um, and they even have like a 24 hour streaming channel for each, like uh, for like the Mystery Science Theater, and, uh, the Totsutaku, which I, I think that's what, because uh, these channels are also on the, the Pluto TV app. So I think they probably pulled from that. But, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you get, I believe, access to these uh, shows and can watch them for uh, for free, which is great for me because, like, I I don't know, I, I really enjoy like the look and the feel of like these shows. Uh, they're just a lot of fun to watch. Uh, also, um, I also have that uh, uh, show from the UK with like the marionettes that uh, do stuff. Uh, the Mysterians or uh, uh, blanking on their name, but uh, that that superhero show, like uh, it's kind of like a kids' action show, but like all the people are played by uh, like marionettes and stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, I, I remember watching some of that stuff when it was on it for me as a kid. And on another side. Um, I'm watching one of the early Ultraman series right now, and uh, mm-hmm. the the captain of the the crew, uh, he actually uh, smokes a pipe. Pipe spotting 2021. Yes. Shout Factory TV app is also available on Android if you happen to have that. I just looked because well, it does show it on the Amazon because the phone doesn't isn't uh, one of those devices that allows the download. You have to go elsewhere. And my Amazon stick, fire stick that I had on the TV just took a... Uh. So I'm using the Chromecast again. It's the most reliable streaming device I've ever had. Sure, I've got to use my phone to do it, but it works. Yeah. I think you should be able to get it on that too, so... Yeah, yeah. Like, like I have to put the app on the phone, but I'd be able to do it. 
Yeah. But uh, I mean, I'm really happy with the app. Like when I'm watching, I'm not having something on for the kid, uh, for my boy to watch. Uh, I'm going to that app and I'm watching some uh, uh, old Japanese superhero shows. Nice. I have been recently just flip-flopping between all of the uh, different... I have like... Oh gosh, the streaming services are nuts that I have. I have almost all of the ones that you can get in Canada. I have Disney Plus. I have... I have Netflix. I have Crave, which is the Hulu of Canada. Because if I want to watch a Hulu show, that's where I have to go. Like Animaniacs, for example. That's on Hulu in the U.S., but it's on Crave TV in Canada. Because it's... uh, Bell Canada is the distributor for that here. So that's Bell's app. So that's where I can get it. Gotcha. Uh, And Disney Plus, of course. That's the same anywhere. And then I got some free ones, a couple free ones that I use for, you know, more obscure stuff, because that's where you find it, usually. It's not in the mainstream stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I've been just basically, basically just you know, flipping back and forth between those. And uh, this worked out. Nice. And the I fun- think of a... Oh, go ahead. And the fun thing is, the government pays for it. Excellent. That's the advantage of being a semi-socialist country. We have so many, we have so many checks and stuff that if you're a low, considered low-income family, that come in, and one of them only comes in, you know, every quarter. So I just buy the services ahead with that check. Yeah. So the only one I actually pay for monthly is Disney. Nice. And, and there's a reason for that. When Disney bought Fox, they added to their lineup a, a, a channel group called Star. Not to be confused with Stars TV, the actual channel that, you know, is in your cable packages and stuff, along with HBO mm-hmm. and all that. Um, they called it Star, and that's where a lot of the Fox stuff is. You know, Deadpool's there, and you know, all the, like like the, some of the ser- like some of the series you'd you'd want to you want to get a hold of, like the TV shows and stuff like that. You can get all that through there. Like, just, we can watch we watch Buffy and Angel and all that through uh, through Disney. Believe it or not. Thank you, Fox merger. Um, but anyway, when they did that. They uh, sent out an email to everybody saying in Canada saying that you know you're because we're adding this your your price per month is going to go up. So I said okay whatever that like, that's not all that surprising really we're going to give you more stuff but we're going to charge you more money. I fell through the cracks they never upped my price. So I went to pay for it for a year and then I I looked at the price for the year and then I looked at my monthly charge and I did the math. I'm paying less than the yearly fee by paying for it monthly because it didn't up me to like 15 bucks a month or whatever there was it was going to be. So I'm going, well, I will just continue to pay for Disney Plus monthly because it's cheaper for me. No, it makes sense. Eventually, uh, right, let's see, we have Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. Prime. Basically. Everybody's got Prime. Everyone who has Prime has access to Prime oh, yeah. TV. Yeah, Prime. Yeah, I don't. Prime. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, personally, I mean, I, we're, we're using it for Avatar right now, but uh, uh, honestly, I could live without Netflix. Uh, Avatar is the only thing that I, I watch off of it, really, other than. Uh, the scare tactics show I mentioned a couple of months ago, probably. Um, and even that, it's like uh, already done. So uh, I'm not sure if or when they'll do a third season. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Great British Baking Show does go on there, and I, that is one of my shows that I do enjoy watching. But, uh, and then uh, with Disney Plus, all we have to do is finish. Uh, 
uh, DuckTales, and then I think uh, we might watch Mandalorian Season 2, and then I think we're going to cancel that for right now. And then, of course, if anything is needed for the podcast, you know, I do that. But uh, I would just be happy with Brian and uh, the Shout Factory album. Although, uh, on Hulu right now, we're watching uh, some stuff on there. So. Yeah, I hear you about Netflix because. In all reality, for Avatar, I'm not even really keeping Netflix around for that because I have the box set of the DVDs here. So it doesn't matter if I have it for Avatar or not. I can just pop in the D- in the Blu-ray and, and watch it whenever I want. So like that's not a thing for me. But I have to keep Netflix around for The Flash until that series is over. Right. Because that's the only way you can get The Flash in Canada. Thank you, Bell, for screwing that up. It's in, It's insane. If I wanted to watch all the, all the CW shows, super sh- DC superhero shows, I can watch. Well, when Arrow was a thing, I could watch that on on the Crave TV. And Legends, I can watch on Crave TV. But because something happened, I, I, I don't really know what exactly it was that, that that Bell did in regards to both the Flash and Supergirl. Um those ended up going elsewhere so netflix has those and i could watch them there now supergirl didn't really get we we lost interest in it after a little bit and uh i just kept you know i'd go and watch it when like the big crossover events happen because you know they do that over the four shows over a week when they do it so i'd watch it then pretty much and that's where it stops um so that's not a big deal to to lose but basically if flash goes season eight season nine is being talked about but season eight's a definite whenever it's over netflix is over for me because i don't i love the show to be honest but it's not something i go back and rewatch. right Although I was really enjoying our uh, season one rewatch because that's such a great season. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it 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 is. It is. Still, probably like if I compare that to even like uh, some of the superhero movies, I, I would I would put up there put it up there in my top five of uh, anything superhero related. Like it's a uh, visual media. Oh, for sure. That's kind of how I am with Legends of Tomorrow. I I loved season one, but after season one, I never I never watched season two. I don't don't know what happened in season two, three, four, five, or six, because, well, for me the story was over at the end of season one. There was no need to continue the show past there. I enjoyed that story. It's one of my favorite stories of the over over a, over a TV show season because it was it was a nice arc. They did it well. I love the characters. All in season one, I just don't want to ruin it. So, yeah, I own season one on uh, season one on DVD. It, like the there's there's no, so far as I know, there's no hook for the next season at the end of it. It's not one that I've seen. That's super super uh, catchy anyway. So, for me, Legends of Tomorrow is a one hit wonder. I know it's not. <laughs> Because otherwise, Legends TV Talk wouldn't even exist. But uh, oh, well, and that's uh, it's a shame because like I actually like one of my favorite characters on that whole show, is Steel, and he comes in, in season two. Uh, but uh, yeah, I saw him. Know, in the, I saw him in the crossover, and I understood who he was and, and yeah. whatnot. But he, he's a fun character. Um, Actually, probably one of the most interesting things Legends did was uh, they had a season where Damian Dark was the big bad, and uh, that that was a good one. And then he, uh, you know, he has his daughter Nora, uh, who also has powers. It's kind of similar to him. It's everything, and uh, 
she ends up falling in love with uh, uh, Ray Palmer. Mm. And, uh, they actually have a really good uh, story together. Mm. And, uh, and I, I'll say that I, I really liked the stuff they did with the three of them, uh, Damien, his daughter, and uh, Ray Palmer. And because uh, like Damien Dark bouncing off of uh, Ray Palmer was, uh, I mean, uh, Brandon Ruth, he's such a great actor and really like, uh, I and mean, he's so likable. And, re- and really, I don't understand why that show got uh, decided to let him go. Uh, because honestly, like he's, again, just a great character. Uh, but uh, I-, I liked everything they did with the three of them. Other than tormenting poor Ray by having him make out with a fairy godmother and that uh, old fairy godmother at the end of like another season where I was just like, why are you, are you punishing him? Did he do something that uh, made the writers angry? Did he do something wrong? <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah, the surprising things uh, for me and uh, one of the filler episodes I did while you were off on your on your trip is I did a basically a season in review on a quick season in review on Loki. It's only six episodes, and uh, I like what they did with it. It hit a lot of my buttons. It was I always liked the character Loki since uh, the MCU came out. Um, there's lots of time travel in it, which is a sci-fi staple, right. and. Uh, I liked the idea of Loki hunting down a Loki. No, it was an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. And it, Still- it's interesting en- enough that uh, they've got a season two in the works because it was announced like right in the right at the end of s- season one, where they did the last episode. The Loki will return in season two. So, oh, we got got a season two of Loki coming. So. That'll be fun, that's, and that's not yeah, and that's not surprising because everyone really likes Loki. Um, I I'm not the biggest fan of the first Avengers movie. It's not a when I say that I'm not saying that's a bad movie. Um, I just think it tends to be a bit overrated by some people. Um, I mean, certainly it was cool to see all these people, uh, you know, all these actors come together for. I like the Avengers team as a whole. They're, they're probably my favorite Marvel team. But uh, I, I felt like there was a lot of filler spent on like the flying uh, uh, base ship and everything. But uh, Loki was really what kind of made that movie for me. And I really liked the, his confrontation with the Hulk where he embraces, I will not be bullied. And it's just like such a great moment that, uh, you know. Doom, 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 puny God. Right, mm-hmm. and, and and I'll give the, the first Avengers movie that is that it does have great moments. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Sure. And that and that being one of them, so it's not a bad movie by any means. Like for me, it would be more like a three point five stars out of five rather than like a five star thing that like a lot of people tend to give it. Yep. Okay, looking at the time and knowing how much I got to cut out here, we should probably wrap this up. Probably. All right, so if you want to continue to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me in various places. All of the links are for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything, are all now included in the description down below, so we're not really going to even go through them all. Like, Greg's are there, too. Like, it's all there. His Instagram, everything. And, uh, of course, you can email us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Yes, you can, you can contact us. Or you can also uh, uh, leave a comment in our uh, YouTube videos. Uh, be sure to smash that like button and uh, subscribe and, and uh, all those wonderful things for the algorithm. Yes, indeed. And with that, we will leave you with the standard exit. We wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Catch you later.